All right, welcome back. I'm going to be re reading the dev blog that happened this force wipe because I didn't get to read it. This is a post by Alistair of 10 years of rust talking about, you know, what went through with uh, with the 10 years of rust and also what's next to come. And then we're going to go on staging afterwards and then we're going to check out the new backpacks and uh, all the new updates. The first update of the year in 2024. Surviving a decade. Servers are now wiped. Santa's packing up. Yeah, yeah. No more December update. Everyone's happy. 10 years of rust. This year, we celebrated Rust's 10th birthday, which has been an incredible journey. Rust is continuing to see year-on-year -year growth, and for a 10-year-old game, that's a rather impressive feat. I agree. At a glance, here are some key gameplay features we added in 2023. So they added the industrial system, which is dub. Drones. RF detonated C4. We saw some crazy stuff in the Twitch Rivals. I think that was a W as well. Security cameras, a W for people that wants to base watch. Player control turrets, kind of a miss. No one uses it. Pings. Kind of cool, but for me, it's kind of an L because I think it takes away from the survival element. Double horse saddle, perfect for E-daters. Missile silo monument. Um, it was a really cold monument, don't get me wrong. And it's super OP, but I honestly don't think it's that good of a monument because once you're in, you can get Omega camped. Wipe event, I think that's an L. Like every time I try to get BPs, there's Brad's, Bradley's everywhere. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem that innovative. It doesn't seem that interactive. Building skins, I think that's a W. I hope we see more um, kind of rust looking building skins in the future. Sleeping back limits. I think this was a miss. Um, I think this was supposed to make it so that grubbing is less, but I think the sleeping bag limit is at 15 right now. The fact that even the beds in your own base contribute to this, if you have like five beds, you have 10 bags you can place on the, on the map. And if you have 10 bags, you're gonna have like five outside your base. Where are you gonna go with a five bag limit, right? Like, where, where are you going to go? You're not going to go anywhere further from your base. I think more people are one grid gaming right now. Less people are going outside of their safe area. I don't know. Maybe maybe they should have made it so that you don't limit the number of sleeping bags, but rather just make it so that instead of like 50 meter radius where you can't place bags, maybe make it like 150. Kind of like how some some modest servers do it. Building upgrade effects. I think it's pretty cool. I have it on. Water refresh. Very cool. Tugboat. Very cool, but honestly, they still haven't balanced the fact that you could just run into a submarine and it's GG's. Very terminal, really cool. I really like the monument. Very underrated. Wounded info, I don't like it. Again, it takes away from the survival element. Chat emoji. This one is kind of controversial here because honestly, it is a good addition, but knowing Rust players, they just use it to be racist. So I'm not sure. Attack helicopter, I think, I think that was a major L for roaming. Homing missile launcher. It's like one of those things where you introduce an OP thing and then this is just another thing to counter that OP thing. And then to get to homing missile, it takes so much just to counter one guy just buying an attack helicopter. Parachutes, really cool. I think it allowed some interesting plays that you can do. Armored hot air balloon. Hell no. I hate that update. Armored hot air balloon. My goodness. Hot air balloon was already annoying. But at least you could shoot it out. Man, when I was playing Twitch Rivals and I was fighting like five armored hot air balloons in the sky, holy shit, that was the most annoying thing ever. Like, it takes so much to take it down. And all you need to do is find the hot air balloon and find that item. Wait, above and below rail linking, I think that's a really W. I think that's a really good update, but I don't see a lot of people using it. Most people that was using the, the train station underneath will not take this way out. But I think it's really cool. I like it. Underground train signals. I mean, that's kind of a whatever um, update, I think. M4 shotgun. I still have not ever seen this gun out in the wild. I have not seen someone use it. I have never heard it. I've never used it. I've never found it. This is, this is so rare. It's actually so rare. And I took so many Bradleys. I took so many crates. I did all like so many times. I don't know, man. Like, where am I supposed to get this gun? But other than that, I think 2023 was pretty content heavy. Like there was so much that was added, so many cool things. There was a few hits, there's a few misses, but they also did had, had a lot of quality of life as well. Russ continues to be a labor of love from all of us at Face Punch, and we couldn't have done it without your passion and feedback. Russ has evolved around player feedback. It's not the game we initially set out to develop, but it's a game we incredibly proud and passionate about to keep developing. Thank you for being an integral part of this incredible journey. We look forward to delivering updates for the years to come. I mean, we can say whatever you want about Rust and about this current state of Rust or like DLCs or like all of that, but we can never say that the, the Rust devs gave up on this game. 
it's a continuous journey to make this game better to have 370 content updates and even after 10 years like i bought this game for like four bucks Twenty thousand years later i'm still getting free updates every single month like i think we're incredibly lucky like we have a very dedicated dev team i always think about this like how far i've come how far my friends have come honestly to see how far rust has come from way back when i first started it's actually unreal 16 million copies sold probably half of that is to cheaters though 1.7 million raised for charity damn that's crazy i think about 1 million of that is from trust and rust including our most recent one looking forward i think this is the most exciting part about this dev blog here a lot of people are excited even people that i knew stopped playing the game because they didn't like it they saw this and they were like man i'm excited so next month, which is this month, they're going to release a backpack update. So it's a new craftable attire. And also there's a one that you can uh, find and not craft. We're finally having backpacks in the game, guys. This is a huge buff to solos. I'm going to check it out on staging after I read this. So yeah, we'll take a look. All right. So we have a ton of content currently in development. And if you're keeping an eye on the commits page, you already know some of the stuff on the way. This year, you can expect to see new and revamped monuments such as the compound, optional tutorial system for new players that's huge by the way motorcycles revamp server listing ui we need this desperately by the way revamp server listing ui like the server listings is so bad you go to the community section it's all botted and it's all modded servers and i kind of skipped through this motorcycles what the hell motorcycles that'd be interesting a hot topic we see is improving the world and the environment. We have multiple patches lined up in 2024 to improve the world, creating unique buildable areas such as canyons and lakes and improving rivers, procedurally generated caves. Additionally, a new biome will be exploring and improving cliffs and adding more variation of rock formation. This is this might be the biggest dub I've heard about rust in a very long time. We plan to address some of the defenders advantages of sea based monuments and events like the cargo ship and oil rig dub. We plan to rework the harbors and the cargo ship will soon dock with the harbors. Damn cargo ships going to dock with the harbors. Okay. Alistair, you're talking dirty to me right now. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure pets will never come. Like literally like if this game ever became like Minecraft and we can farm our own pigs, we have dogs, we have cats. Literally, we're going to have one guy that hoards like 50,000 cats. I'm kind of like that in real life, but every server will be so laggy. It just, it, I don't know. I don't think they'll ever add something that we can tame. Nexus. If you follow our public commits, you'll have seen the Nexus system. What is the Nexus system? In short, the Nexus system allows us to cluster servers together and enable players to travel from server to server to server in game using flight and boats by traveling to the edge of the map, effectively linking an unlimited amount of servers, creating an environment where you can interact with tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of players and explore multiple maps without the need to move servers permanently. Nexus opens many doors to us. For example, dedicated Arctic maps and maps with advanced AI and high yielding resource maps, but with a dangerous dude, what the fuck? We don't plan for Nexus to replace the current existing server format as you play currently, but rather an optional new way to play Rust if you wish, to, if you cho choose to do so. We plan to release Nexus in 2024? It's coming this year? All right. Night times. Listen, I, I read this very briefly um, and I was disappointed, but I'm going to read it more thoroughly this time. Another hot topic within the community. For years between 2015 and 2019, we experimented with brighter nights. Whatever we tried, we saw many players using third party tools to gamma boost to see at night and gain an unfair advantage over other players. It's a complex issue to address. If we increase light levels at night, we'll reopen old lessons which we know did not work in the past. Nighttime acts as a natural time for players to take a break, craft, build, or use the cover of darkness to move loot or harvest resources. We want to retain this and allow players to use darkness to their advantage with the use of night vision and light sources. I'm going to be honest. I don't mean to break any developers' hearts because no one is playing the game in nighttime. Ain't nobody playing the game. Everyone's watching TikTok. Everyone's watching a YouTube video. Everyone's going out. Like, or just AFKing, looking at their screen because it's black. I don't know. One of the biggest things when a new player comes to this game, especially when I play with big streamers that play for the first time, they're like, what the hell? I can't see anything. It's like my screen turned off at nighttime. I don't think I know a single game where it just literally becomes a black screen. It's, I get that you don't want to have people like exploiting, 
but people are exploiting as we speak right now like there's a new gamma hack or there's like a new thing that people are using that makes them see at night and people can just use their monitor settings like there's no way you can stop it but this is the biggest and possibly the biggest problem in the entire gaming industry right now cheating anti-cheat a hugely complex topic we work closely with epic games easy anti-cheat eac man eac freaking eac to aid in detecting and banning cheaters in rust we don't disclose what we do and don't do when it comes to anti-cheat for a good reason the more information we disclose publicly the more it can assist cheaters and cheat developers to circumvent measures it's a huge cat and mouse game one of the best anti-cheat measures is obscurity the fewer people know what eac and we are doing the better this comes with the drawback of not communicating enough on the outside it appears we're doing nothing almost every month we're shipping improvements or fixing restricting cheat features we fixed several high priority exploits on, upon discovery or disclosure within hours through hot fixes we don't know publicly eac sometimes pushes several improvements weekly which are implied when you start the game our promise to use we're actively monitoring and combating cheaters daily our internal systems keep improving as do eac Last year, we over doubled our support team to aid in player support issues, which included anti-cheat matters. This year, we're dedicating more resources into anti-cheat than ever and exploring some more radical measures. I hope this radical measure just have my so social security number. I'll give you my credit card info. I'll give you my entire identity to play this game with no cheaters. And old content, we've set aside multiple months in our internal roadmap of light or no content. These gaps are deliberate to allow us to be versatile and adaptive to community feedback, time to focus and address old content and improve recent content. We have a lot we can keep building upon. Not all content we add to Rust is supposed to become meta, but rather adding yet another way of achieving a goal. That's beautifully put, actually. At a quick glance here, just some changes ahead. Older monument reworks and improvements. Continue experimenting and making meta changes to gunplay. Huh? Continue experimenting and making meta changes to gunplay. Hey, yo. Wait, are we going to see a gunplay rework? Softcore, hardcore. Listen, if this is not going to be a separate tab, it's going to die no matter what you do, I think. Experimenting with progression? Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm close. Keep going, Alistair. Improvements to AI? Improvements to events such as patrol helicopter, launch site APC, and cargo ship? World environment? Underwater exploration subnautica? Missions GTA 6? Using our data analytics to identify less commonly used items and balancing? Experimenting with new ways events to encourage players to engage with PvP? Oh! Oh! oh. That's, a, that's a thumbs up. Oh my god, that's a thumbs up. This might be the most positive <laughs> reaction I've seen to a devlog in like years. Holy shit. Wait, this is... This this thing right here, I didn't read on four swipe. I just read um I just read nighttime and the fact that they're not gonna change it and I got disappointed. But wow, this dev blog is goaded. But anyways, we're gonna check out the backpacks in game now. There is the small backpack and then there's the large backpack. You can only craft the small backpack and it's five sewing kits, fifty cloth, and I'm pretty sure you don't need tier one right now to make this. But can I craft this? Oh, I can. You can just craft it without a tier one. So if you get this one, the small backpack, you can put it on your backpack slot like this. I think they're also making it so that um, diving tanks can also be put on on that slot. Yeah. So what this means, guys, is actually a huge game changer. Because if you're an oil rat, right? Now you can do this. Oh, wait. Wait, you still can't? Oh, this is a nice... I wonder if this is intended. But you can do full full metal and uh, and this, though. So basically, you can put stuff in here like this. Now you have two extra lines. And then I think this one, large backpack, this one is crazy, guys. This one is five lines. A full... It just doubles your inventory, basically. Now, one thing I was wondering is, can I craft with the stuff in my backpack? I can't. So I can only craft if the cloth is in my actual inventory. Can I throw it on the ground? I can throw it on the ground. Yo. I can I can put stuff in there and then put it on the ground. But anyways, this uh, large backpack, 
is something you can only find, I think. I don't think it's craftable. I don't know where you can get it from. Probably Chinook crates and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. And you can open it. And if you want to actually pick it up, you got to press hold E on it. Wait, so you can move so much loot then. Guys, somebody call Alone in Tokyo right now. He's got the he's got the only buff for solos in three years. This guy got sacked with bag bag limit, team UI going to like 24. He was getting shafted every single update. Because every single update was shafting solos. Alone in Tokyo is back. Holy. Like you can just put your entire base on this boat. I'm moving my entire base. Oh no! Oh, I gotta be careful. I gotta be a good driver though. Holy shit. My 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 backpacks might be gone. Alright, I got all my C4 in here. No! I have all my loot. Yo, it's sinking! I think we're good. I think we're good. Imagine I'm alone in Tokyo. I have all of my raid loot. Wow, dude, it's actually staying. How many do I have? I have five backpacks in here. It's probably all you'll ever need, to be honest. But this is completely enclosed. This is completely enclosed. So theoretically... Oh, shit. Let's go for a drive. How? Oh, wait, it's all staying. Wait, this is crazy. That's five inventories. Someone call posties, not crying anymore.